the whole time after the resurrection, the people would meet each other on the street and they would greet each other by saying, Christ is risen. And you respond by saying, indeed, he's alive. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Can you greet two people and tell them Christ is risen and they respond, indeed, he's alive. Amen. The Lord bless you. And at that, you can open the book of John, chapter number 11. John, chapter number 11. And Luke 24. Luke 24. John said to her, your brother will rise again. Mother said to him, I know that you will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Amen. Did we say, I believe? Did we sing, I believe? So whoever believes enjoys the blessings of the Lord. Verses 38, 44. Then Jesus, again groaning to himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Mother, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And, and he who had died came out bound, hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to him, lose him and let him go. Now, I want to share with you on a simple topic I'm calling resurrected but bound. Tell your neighbor, resurrected but bound. Um, I heard someone say something. And he said, the work that Jesus did on the cross was done once and for all. And actually, he looked back after dying and he saw how well he died. Amen. And how well the Father marked that exam for him, and he said, it is finished. Everything. And it's like someone who goes, anybody with a receipt here? Someone went to the shop, right, and wanted to bless you. Bought something for you, praise God. Then he came looking for you, and he said, Pastor, this is your receipt. Let's, let's preach with you today. This is your receipt. All right? Yes. Now, you can choose to feel nice that you have a receipt. And show people that you know what? I have a receipt. Things were bought for me. But you can also choose to go to the shop and present the receipt. And say, someone bought these things for me. Then you receive what is in the receipt. Amen. Now, all these things are yours, as far as the nation, as far as the central bank, as far as the government is concerned. It knows that the owner of this receipt, written Pastor Kirk, the owner of this receipt has things in our shop. And whatever time he comes for them, as long as he can show the receipt, shall be given to him. Praise the name of the Lord. Am I speaking to somebody here? Now, what Jesus did, the Bible says, he paid for us. So well that he looked back and said, there is no debt. And it was not a higher purchase. Everything is paid. And he gave a receipt to you. And he said, sir, any time you walk in this shop, you can have your things. This is the receipt. But then the question is, 
If everything was paint, are we enjoying? Are we happy that it was paint and we have a receipt? But we are suffering with our receipts. Turn somebody and say, are you happy that you have a receipt? And that it was paint? Or are you enjoying the receipt? So how many of us believe it was paint for us? How many of us believe we were healed by stripes? How many of us believe that when he said it is finished, it was finished? Praise God. We have no problem believing that. That's why we have a receipt in our pocket. But can we take another step further and enter to the place that has our things and they say, he paid, but we were to come for them. Did you hear that? Because people can be telling you, I have your things. Pastor, I have your offering. <laughs> I, I love that. Pastor says, bring, and I have to give. <laughs> come, Pastor. Now look, come, Pastor. Look at this. As long as I have his offering, and he does not come for it, I will have it. Amen. And it is biblical sound to have for me to keep it for you. For the Bible says... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let me finish up with them. <laughs> then I can say, come pastor. Hey, it's serious. You, you pick something. Thank you, pastor. The Lord bless you. Amen. Now, I'm happy. I have something for someone else. I, I love that. <laughs> oh, uh, what a blessing. That people in Nehemiah believe that they have had something for them. How much more does God have for them? Amen. And how much more does God have for me? Amen. Do you know why? Because yes. God knows there are people who believe I have things for them. So you keep putting them in me. So that they can carry for them. Yes. And if you don't come for them, I use them. Yes. And God is not offended. Amen. Amen? Amen? Because some things will expire. And I don't want them, them to expire in my hands. So I, I enjoy them. So that God can say that it was a good idea. Don't let things go around. Yes. Now look, pastor picked something. My brother picked something. And still I have something. Are you seeing that? Now, I hand something for him and for him and for other people. I, I'm still coming. So keep believing God. <laughs> Did we read only believe? Now, and Jesus said, I have paid. And this is the receipt. So anyone who comes can pick what was paid for him and enjoy. But you can choose to clap for Jesus. And they say, you paid for me? Oh my Jesus, you paid everything for me? Even when I'm suffering, it is all paid? And I give a testimony. Don't look at the way I am. It was paid. <laughs> Don't just look at me. It was paid. And everybody says, whether you take it or not, it was paid. Amen. Lift your hand and say, it was paid. But you see, the work of the Lord was over at the cross. And that's why he's saying, my work is over. Then after his resurrection, he found his brethren, his, his disciples, and he commissioned them. He said, go to every nation. Doing what? Preaching, doing what? Hearing, doing what? Do you know what you were saying? Now that I have done my part, it becomes easier, Pastor, for you now yes. to use my wallet and give to people. The whole thing? No, to give to people. Or to give to people. Pastor, remember you'll go home at night. <laughs> remember. Uh, be safe. <laughs> be, be safe. Amen. Are you seeing something here? Amen. Okay, just come back now. Hi, Pastor. <laughs> hey! Okay, now, look, pastor, did you sweat to do that? No. 
Why? And you still want to go continue doing that? Why? Okay, do this, remove yours. Remove yours. Now, look. Ah, just, just hold on. I want you to see something here. That God made a say for us, all right? He said, in my name. The reason why pastor was not struggling is this. It is not his wallet. In fact, his work was not to see how much is left. It's to see who to give, all right? Did you see that? I mean, his work was, he was smiling. Oh, glory be to God. How I bless God that I don't give what is mine. He put it in my hands for me to give. And that is my joy, Pastor. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that after today, we'll have a different perspective on the way God wants us to say things. Now the Bible says what? Jesus paid everything, gave us a receipt. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you getting blessed, Pastor? Yes, I am. Then the Bible says, in the book of John, there are seven I ams. I am, I am, I am. And the, one of the I ams is, I am the resurrection. And we see a story of our Lord Jesus visiting with a family, and the Bible says that he laughed. Can you imagine? A family of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And they, they had so much fellowship that they could talk to Jesus and say, Jesus, your friend Lazarus is sick. I love that. And I tell you, church, we need to understand something. Love does not mean run. <laughs> Mom, the people who run and who come fast, it doesn't mean necessarily they love you. Some people who come 20 years later could be their genuine friends. Amen. That's why Jesus was told, your friend is very sick unto death. But the Bible says what? He stayed for how many more days? And the people arrived before Jesus, mourners, undertakers, yes. so serious that they had to bury him even before he came. Yes. <laughs> now, those who arrive first when you shout don't mean that they are your friends. I tell you the truth. You need to understand, even Jesus took time before he responded to the call of Mother and Mary. I have seen people who run away from church. They say, I had a problem and the pastor never came. I tell them, I wish you would understand what it means. Mm -hmm. I, I went through this. I even called the pastor and he never came. So I left that church. Lift your hand and say, that will not be me. Do you know why, pastor, I tell people that? If you'd know that even after you run away from the church, that was a small thing. There are other things coming. That's why Jesus asked Martha, do you believe? And he said, yes. If you are here, when this was happening, you would have stopped it. But Jesus said, I may not have stopped, but I'm still God. Amen. Amen. I may not have come like others, faster and quicker like others, but I'm still Jesus. Amen. I tell people, when you have a relationship with your pastor, you must have it so seriously that even if he doesn't show up, you still can sense his presence. Amen. I tell people, the way I pray for my people, pastor, is different from other people the way they pray. I know it. Because my prayer is don't get into problem. But members pray, let problem come so that I see how pastor loves me. <laughs> so which one would you want? Not to be sick the whole year or to be sick all the time so that I can be coming to see you. Which one do you want? But the people don't see that they were not sick. Are you getting that? People don't testify that since January to December, I was not sick. So they see, I got sick in December 25th, and the pastor never came. What about January to December, when I was on my knees concerning your life? And then you leave me because of one day. That's why the Bible says you are cast with a cast. Because if I spent those hours I spent praying for you, doing other things, I would have seen the results. I pray that the church will be a blessed church. Amen. That we see things in the right perspective. So that God can look at Nehemiah and say, this is the church I look forward to build. Look at you and say, these are my people. That I paid the price on the cross and I said, it is over. It is finished. Now look, the Bible says, Lazarus died. 
And Jesus and saint, this sickness is not unto death. How many times you have been told it is not unto death and death come knocking? Do you know what I tell people? I, there are people have given a word, I say, this is what the Lord says. And the next time they come and say, it didn't work. I say, that's okay. It was not my word. Amen. I spoke what God was saying. Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. But within a short time, people were mourning. Within a short time, the man was buried. But Jesus came still to that place. And the people, people said, but he died. And the Lord Jesus said, no, no, he is sleeping. And disciples mocked and said, let's go and wake him up also. If he is sleeping, let's see how it is done. But Jesus came, found Martha. I love those two people. Number one, Martha looked at Jesus and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But he said, anyway, I know, at the time of resurrection, you rise. But the same mother, look, the same, the same ones, the same ones were sent by mother, were sent by Mary. But Mary sent in a different way. The Bible says, she knelt before the Lord and he said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. The same ones. One is a worshiper, one is not. That is why the Bible says, Jesus is looking for people who will worship him in truth and? Yeah. So that when a worshiper says, I hate you, and another person says, I hate you, those ones are not the same. Amen? There's somebody, pastor, who tell you, break a visa. Another one says, break a visa. One, you'll be offended. Another one, you'll laugh at it. I saw Kumo's son yesterday was picking pastor's phone. And the pastor pulled it back. And he told pastor, I'll fight you. And the pastor laughed. Because he saw Gideon, David at the Gideon, I mean Goliath. David is saying, oh. And he loves that. Now, if you tell pastor, I'll fight you. And that boy says, I'll fight you. This man will not take things the same. <laughs> All right? Actually, one, you're not even bother telling the father, this is what your son told me. But you, you even call the police. <laughs> same ones. To one is a threat. Same ones. Proper, the same syllables. But sent by a different person. That's why one person carries a blessing. Another one doesn't carry a blessing. One says, God bless you. And you can tell it's a way of greeting others. And another one says, God bless you. And you can tell your life has changed. And I say, may God bless you. Now listen. Lazarus is dead. Has been buried. And Jesus has shown up. Tell your neighbor, resurrected but bound. Tell him, resurrected but bound. If there is anything that I feel bad for, or when I see, is a believer who is bound. Because they don't know when they are bound. Amen? They never know when they are. They were undertakers. They were mourners who came before him. Now, look at this church. This was Lazarus. Are you seeing that? And when Jesus came, he asked, where have you put him? And they said, by now, he is thinking. Let me say this. A friend does not think. Did you hear that? That's why in a family, you never hear anybody saying, my brother is Surambaya. No. No. <laughs> there is nobody who is hungry in a family. Do you agree with me? It doesn't matter how one looks like, there is nobody who is hungry in a family. Somehow the blood and the time make us beautiful. And I want to declare in Jesus' name. In the family of Jesus Christ, we are all beautiful and a wonderful man in Jesus' name. Amen. Of course, somebody said, that one, those, those are two ones, Pastor. Beauty and, and wonder. You are beautiful and wonderful. So those two ones, beauty and wonder. And they said, there are people whose beauty is more pronounced and the others whose wonder is more pronounced. <laughs> so those, you, you, you find, <laughs> amen, you find somebody whose um, maybe legs, you, you don't love your legs or something. It's a wonder. Amen. And they praise God. To another one, the beauty is more pronounced. But God has created us. Beautiful friend. Lift your hands and they say, I have a beauty and a wonder. 
But you see, that's why many people get discouraged in life. Because the people, <coughs> people zero in on your wonder. Amen? If people zero in on your wonder, you say it for your breakthrough. God put it in your life for breakthrough. That's why you see some comedians, they are comedians even, even before they say anything. The way he looks, just the way he looks, is a comedy. And he knows it, so he says, I will glorify my wonder. Let people come and see what? Lift your hands and say, I have a wonder and a beauty. Now Jesus came and asked, where have you kept him? And he was told by now, he is thinking. Let me tell you, there is no point you can go with God until you are rejected. No. That's why people call you late brother when you die. But for Jesus, he is still brother Lazarus. He is not dead. He is sleeping. When someone is sleeping, it does not degrade. The fact that you are sleeping does not mean you, are you have lost value. You say so? When you die, you may lose value. But when you are sleeping, you have not lost value. So Jesus came and they called Lazarus. Lazarus! In a loud voice. Lazarus! In a loud what? And the people are like, does it he know he is dead? Does it he know that is not the first time? We have seen this. And Jesus said, believe, I am what? The resurrection. Now Lazarus, wake up. Now, look, go, wait, 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 wait. Now, can you imagine? Man, did you feel something? Did, did you feel something? Woo! Did you feel something? When you see that, wow, it's about the resurrection. There can be no resurrection without feeling something. Now look, can you imagine one day, you are conducting a burial, you have sent all the liturgies, and then you are just about to say, the soil become whatever, ashes back to soil. And then all of a sudden, there is a cough down there. <laughs> Even the worship team, I can tell you, they will run away. Even if they have sung the resurrection power, they will run away. You know, I mean, I don't know whether we are prepared for resurrection anyway. But look, when he resurrected, imagine the celebration. Yeah, imagine how people celebrated him. Imagine people looking at him and it's like, wow, he died, now he's alive. Lift your hand and say, resurrected, but bow. Now, look. Jesus saw this. Amen? Jesus saw what? A resurrected person, but bowed. Did you read the book of Luke? The Bible says, when they went, they found what? The grave what? Clothes. You don't resurrect and go with your linen. The grave clothes, you leave them in the grave. Because if you go with them, they'll be speaking to you, you are dead. So Jesus looked at him and he said, he is bowed. Now, let me show you, church, the resurrection part is the work of Jesus Christ. That's why he said, I am the resurrection. And I tell you the truth, in this church, there is nobody who is dead. Lift your hand and say, I am alive. <laughs> nobody is dead here. The Bible says, as many as have come to the Lord Jesus Christ, they are alive. In Christ Jesus. But Jesus saying, I will not celebrate like others. Because if I leave this man the way he is. Look at him. Look at this man. The way he is. He can't help himself. Actually, you can't even tell who that is. This person, if you look at him, honestly, you know people because of their face. Have you ever seen anybody looking at you, Pastor? I'll be a pastor, you look familiar. Have you, anybody looking at your feet? Do, you, do people look at their feet? As looking at your feet, I say, brother, you look familiar. Have you ever seen that? No, have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen that, Pastor? What do people look at? The face. That's why the Bible says, may the face of the Lord shine upon your life. Actually, the Bible says, by pronouncing the blessing on the people, the name of the Lord shall be put on their forehead. Can you imagine that? Now, it is not in any other place on the forehead. But look, when he woke up, the face is covered.